Hey guys, this is Doug with fellowshipofthemartyrs.com, coming to you from Liberty, Missouri. Lots of good stuff on our website, free books, music, and all kinds of things. Over the last four and a half years, I've probably been to 300 plus different congregations. For two and a half, three years, the Lord sent me every single Sunday visiting two, three, four different congregations. If you plan it out just right, you can hit the 8 o'clock uh, old people service at this one and the 915 contemporary service and then the 1030 really, really contemporary service and then the 3 o'clock and then the Sunday night service and visit three, four places on a Sunday. And uh, I was there to pray. I was there to meet some folks, to talk to the pastors occasionally about the need to be one, occasionally to get tossed out, uh, sometimes for not doing anything just because their demons knew not to have me there. Lots of great stories about that, but in, in the process, I had an opportunity to get outside of my Southern Baptist upbringing and really examine uh, some of the other denominations up close and personal. Now there are people who, um, heresy hunter, apologist type people who can tell you what's wrong with this, uh, what's wrong with the Mormons, what's wrong with the Jehovah's Witnesses, what's wrong with the, the Pentecostals, what's wrong with whatever, but uh, a lot of times it's by reading books or uh, philosophizing not about firsthand personal experience. And I'm not the type to sit around in a room arguing about how many teeth a horse has when I can just go find a horse and count their teeth. So, uh, praise God, he had me go uh, count some teeth. Um, and I want to talk a little bit um, in this video about uh, the United Pentecostal Church, the UPC. Um, I'm going to make some videos about a whole bunch of the different denominations that I've visited. I've, I've been to, I don't know, three to five UPC congregations and met lots of people that were members of UPC congregations other places. They are just about the meanest Christians or people that call themselves Christians uh, in all my travels. Now, uh, I don't mean to infer that everyone there is mean or that no one there is saved or has Jesus or is sweet or whatever, but um, they have got to be way, way up at the top of the most legalistic, uh, wound up tight groups that I visited. The United Pentecostals um, tend to believe that they're absolutely right. I'm talking specifically, um, and, and there's other offshoots and whatever that aren't any different, but I want to specifically um, talk about the oneness Pentecostal philosophy. Um, the oneness Pentecostals <coughs> believe that Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, that the Trinity is made up, that it was added by the Catholics, that you are a, a, a pantheist, believe, meaning that you believe in multiple gods, if you are a Trinitarian, and that God is one, and uh, therefore uh, that uh, the Trinity is manufactured, that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, and that you are to be baptized by immersion in the name of Jesus or else you are not saved. There is uh, a pastor here in Liberty that I've talked to several times, and God really wanted revival to show up in his congregation, even had me fasting and praying without food or water for three days, staying in his building, believing and wanting God to show up. But he would not play nice with others. He would not 
acknowledge that other people were part of the body of Christ. I sat with him one time, <clears throat> and uh, he said, well, uh, you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, weren't you? I'm like, well, I was six years old, um, but that's the way my dad always did it, so I presume that, yeah, that's exactly the way the, that he would have done it, being a Southern Baptist and what all, and he said, well, then you're not saved. You need to be rebaptized in the name of Jesus. And for the record, there's verse references that go both ways. One time it says to baptize him in the name of Jesus. Another time it says to baptize him, baptizing him in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. His argument is that all the verses about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were added by the Catholics and that the truth is that you need to be baptized in the name. And since the Father is not the name, the Holy Spirit is not the name, but Jesus is the name, the others are titles, then you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And since he's all three, you just baptize him in the name of Jesus. It is a twisted, convoluted argument that denies that Jesus came to be the bridge to connect us to the Father, that he said, I only do what I see the Father doing. And they're, they're just under a nasty red dragon. Now, they're not unique in being an under, under a red dragon. Pretty much everybody's under a red dragon of one sort or another because they're chasing something other than uh, the pearl of great price and the truth of the gospel and the fullness uh, of God. <clears throat> and they're chasing this doctrine which popped up at the Camp Ridge revivals uh, around the 1900s and caused a ton of division and ended what was a, a really cool move of God at the Camp Ridge revivals and this new doctrine that Jesus is one and you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus swept through the thing and uh, has caused lots of problems ever since. It, it is obnoxious. I, I sat talking to this pastor and he called me a heretic and I said, well, that just means a school of opinion and you're a heretic if you refuse to fellowship with other parts of the body that have Christ in them. And this revivalist prophet lady um, who was there wigged out. I'm not going to let you talk to the pastor that way. And da, 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 da. I said, look, we're just trying to reason together. And, and I start quoting verses to her. What about this? What, what about when John baptized Jesus and he came up out of the water? And, and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove, and a voice from heaven said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Was he just doing a ventriloquist act to confuse us? Was he just, you know, manifesting a dove and pretending, throwing his voice up into the clouds because it was Jesus the whole time trying to convince us they were three separate things? And she looks at me and says, People like you are my worst nightmare. People that know the Bible inside and out are my worst nightmare. I'm like, Do you listen to yourself? Do you listen to yourself? I just sat there stunned. I didn't even I didn't I didn't say that. I couldn't respond at all. I'm just like, huh? Huh? People that can quote the Bible back to you and reason with you are your worst nightmare? And the Lord's like, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's who's operating here. It's you know, she she was mangled up and very witchcrafty. But he picked her over me, wouldn't reason together. And God turned him over to it. And every crazy Pentecostal, whatever, rolling around, jumping up and down, running in circles thing started showing up instead of a real sweet spirit of repentance that had been there before. And he turned him over to it and had me leave. And later on, the pastor figured out she was dangerous and tossed her out. Anyway, uh, but didn't repent for any of his theology, didn't repent for not being one, didn't repent for... <clears throat> there are very sincere people in the oneness Pentecostal movement that really love Jesus that pray really hard that being under red dragon doesn't mean you're not sincere doesn't mean that you're not really seeking after Jesus but you're under a delusion and you're under a delusion that is very dangerous. If you are going to judge people on carnal terms all the time, as a matter of policy, 
and believe that you're okay and that you're spiritual. Not only that, believe that you're the point of the spear and you're the only ones that are right and everybody else is wrong. But if their hair's not long enough, if their dress isn't long enough, if, if their suit isn't silky enough, they don't, they don't fit and you're going to have to throw them out and call them a Jezebel. And I've seen it happen. And, and some of the most mangled up, damaged people that were hurt by church that I know that never darkened the doors anywhere ever again was because of a UPC congregation that was vile and mean to them or put their hand on their head and pushed them onto the ground whether they wanted to go down or not or some or told them how sinful they were because they had a tattoo or whatever And ran them straight out of the church of God. And ran them straight away from Jesus. I don't expect this to stick. Frankly, I don't expect any oneness Pentecostals to repent because of this video. Unless the Lord releases you from this delusion, you're stuck. And you're going to keep believing it violently and vehemently and angrily and you're going to write to me and you're going to tee off on me and you're going to act very very un-Jesus-y and be absolutely sure that you're justified in doing it and I'm challenging you now before you write to me prove that the love of God is in you or you are not one of his Jesus came to connect us to the Father Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father all things return unto God who made them. They are three. I've heard all three speak. They are different, and yet they are one. To give all the glory and honor to Jesus denies the supremacy, the holiness, the almightiness of the Father. Jesus came to be a bridge to connect us to the Father. Jesus is not the end-all, be-all. And God judges the heart. And if I was baptized in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit by a pastor who maybe didn't know any better, but I was really sincere and I wanted Jesus, well, then I'm going to get Jesus. I sat with this pastor, and he said, well, you're, you're not saved. You, and you can't get the Holy Spirit in you. You can't be baptized in the Holy Spirit unless you're baptized in the name of Jesus. And I'm like, but you know I speak in tongues. You know that I've seen miracles happen through me. You know that the Holy Spirit is in me. You know by my love. You know that I'm saved and that Christ is in me. And he's like, yeah, I know. I just can't figure out how that happened because it's, that's, that's not supposed to work that way. Ah. Well, observationally speaking, there's a whole lot of people with the Spirit of God in them that didn't do it your way. So your way has loopholes. So your, your laws, your rules don't work. This same pastor... I'm sitting there and I said, okay, so they got to be baptized in the name of Jesus or they're not saved. Yeah. He's got a website. Never mind, never mind, never mind. I'm sitting talking to him and I said, so they have to be immersed or they're not saved. Yeah. Okay, so if somebody's in a hospital and they're like all hooked up to all these machines and they can't breathe on their own and, and they make a commitment of faith and they really want Jesus and they turn their whole life over to Jesus we got to unplug them from life support and go find the, ho the hospital pool and dunk them or they're not saved, right? Yeah. Okay, so two guys in a foxhole, bombs incoming. One guy turns to the other, preaches the gospel to him. He gives his heart to God. He takes his canteen, pours it over his head right before the bomb strikes. That doesn't count because he wasn't immersed and he's going to hell, right? Yeah, that's right. Ugh. Okay, so you're out in the desert. You've only got one cup of water. The guy wants to get baptized. You sprinkle it on his head because it's all you got. It doesn't count. He's not saved. Can't get filled with the Holy Spirit. Not going to heaven. Right. Dude. I'm like, dude, that's just, that's just, that completely violates the fact that God judges the heart. Not how much water you have handy. Do I believe they're supposed to be immersed? Yes. When I baptize people, do, I, do we immerse them? Yes, in living water, in the river. 
Now, would I baptize him in a baptistry and feel okay about that? Yeah, that'd be fine. I don't care. Would I baptize him in a 55-gallon drum and just dunk their head? Down? Yeah, that's the way they do in China and Tibet and other places. Whatever. It's the heart that God is going to judge. And the desire and the, and the hunger and thirst for, for righteousness that God is going to judge. Do I believe it's okay to baptize babies? No. Should we baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus? You know what? They're both in there. Ask God and do whatever he tells you. I asked God, and he said, baptize them in the name of Jesus. It'll mess with their head. Because they'll think you're one of them. But you're not. You're just doing it because I told you to. Not because it's required. Not because it's mandatory. Not because they won't get saved And if you don't baptize them in the name of Jesus. But I look at that pastor. And he says, you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. We've got to rebaptize you. I said, Lord, no, you're fine. I took care of it. Everything's fine. Don't worry about that. Okay. I'm like, nope. God says, I'm fine. And he... It, he doesn't know what to do with that because he doesn't hear God that good I said Lord if what, what do you want me to do maybe they're right about this you want me to baptize them in the name of Jesus or the Father Son and the Holy Spirit he says baptize them in the name of Jesus I'm like huh do is that because it doesn't count if they're not no no just between me and you that's the way I want you to do it okay that's fine so I turned to this pastor and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. From now on, anybody I baptize, I'll baptize them in the name of Jesus. Does that make you happy? Because God told me. So I, that's the way we'll do it. Didn't really seem to satisfy him. I got a video about Calvinists I just made. If you, if you divide off into sections, if you divide off into pieces, if you are denominational, factious, you are a sect and ultimately you are a cult because you deny the word of God you make up your own rules and you say this trumps anything else that the word of God might say this core little nugget of our belief system is the fundamental thing and you got to believe that or we won't play nice with you in this city the UPC pastors don't come to the Ministerial Association, don't go to prayer breakfasts, don't fellowship with the other Christians in town because they're not saved. Because they're Trinitarians, they're polytheists, and we don't fellowship with them. And I have no idea how you have a citywide revival where God shows up and these guys somehow play a part in it without laying down some of their walls and some of the nonsense secondary doctrines that aren't salvation issues that they have turned into salvation issues like how long your hair is or not we had a guy here he was from one that had created an elaborate theology to, to justify all the men being clean shaven because no man would have a beard. God does not want people to have a beard and they're like, well, Jesus had a beard. They ripped his beard out. It says right there, they ripped his beard out. No, after they arrested him, he was in prison for three days and his beard grew and he couldn't shave and that's why he had a beard for them to rip out. But he didn't have a beard before that because God doesn't want us to have beards. Wouldn't you just stuck three days in there out of nowhere, just created three days so that he could have a beard, so that you can justify not having a beard? It's insanity. That's delusion. It's just, it's just created out of thin air to justify whatever. People come at me and say, oh, he's got long hair. I automatically knew that he has long hair. He's not a man of God. Have you seen the pictures of Jesus? Have you ever seen a picture of Jesus with a crew cut? And yet, that's what you're demanding? Like I said, I, I, I think I'm mostly making this for educational purposes so that people can see the underpinnings, the guts of, of what's behind the scenes with the UPC. Um... If you think you're right, 
if you are unswayed and you're just absolutely sure I'm crazy and I'm the, of the devil, then pray real hard and try to love me anyway. And save your breath and don't try to talk me out of it because I know what the Bible says. The Bible is clear through the Old Testament, through the New Testament, that God is one and God is three. And Jesus is not the Father. The Father's the Father. Jesus is the Son. And they are one and they are separate. And I am not a polytheist, but I know that you're stopping before you cross the bridge. That Jesus was the bridge and you're dead ended at the bridge. I have yet to meet one that was really walking in holiness, that was really known by their love, that was really unstoppably, unshakably in love with all the brethren, regardless of whether they were in that building or not. And that, to me, is evidence that there's a blockage somewhere. Thanks for listening. We're running out of time. This nonsense has got to stop. More on fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.